Roma Wines present Suspense. Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Salud! Your health, senor. Roma Wines host the world. The wine for your table is Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is the man in black, here to introduce this weekly half hour of Suspense. Tonight from Hollywood, we bring you in a dramatic role and in a character different from those you are accustomed to seeing him portray, Mr. Charles Ruggles. But before we raise the curtain on this evening's Suspense play, here is a message from your host, the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California. Distance lends enchantment, says the old proverb. And it seems borne out in this little episode that we might see taking place at the smart and handsome Pan American Club, Havana, Cuba. An American visitor is amazed that his Cuban host can picture the marvelous climate and rich, fruitful soil of California without ever having been there. But the Cuban responds, One sip alone of wonderful Roma wine tells me all that. Only true perfection of climate and soil could produce the perfection of your splendid California wine, Roma wine. That's so, and as Roma wines become available to wine connoisseurs of more and more lands, the chorus of praise grows for the truly superb quality of these good Roma wines. No wonder, then, these wine experts of other lands are so eager to import Roma wines, no matter what the distances from our own California. And no wonder, too, that these taste-delighting Roma wines, with no import duty to pay and without expensive shipping charges added to their cost here, are America's largest selling wines. With such richly rewarding enjoyment within your reach, why not get acquainted with your favorites among Roma Wine's many different delightful wine types? Remember the name, R-O-M-A, Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. And now with Dorothy L. Sayers' story, Suspicion, and with the performance of Charles Ruggles, as Mr. Hubert Mummery, Roma Wines again hope to keep you in suspense. <laughs> Mr. Mummery took the morning train down to business, as he always did. He opened the door of his office, much as he always opened it, and saw his partner, Brooks, sitting at his desk as he always sat. And the world seemed perfectly orderly and dependable and sane. And then it began, very simply, out of a few chance remarks, the terror took shape and grew until it was a black mountain of fear and suspicion. Oh, morning, Mummery. Pleasant morning, huh? Yeah? Oh, oh, quite, quite, well, quite. I've been looking through some bank accounts. I've an idea they're trying to put us off until... Hubert, Mummery, what's the matter with you? Yeah, with me? You gave me a start. Why, man, you're as white as a sheep. Oh, am I? Well, I, I'm not feeling quite myself this morning. Breakfast didn't agree with me. Hmm. Didn't agree with me at all. But... Well, you'd better look after yourself. We're none of us as young as we once were. You yeah, know? always had a beastly stomach, always. Well, I can't remember you having an attack like this in years, Mummery. Huh. That new missus of yours giving you proper food. Good, mild, digestible thing. No, oh, <laughs> I'm afraid Ethel knows nothing at all about a kitchen. Well, that's what you get for marrying a girl without showing it to a friend. Doing it in such a rush, ten-day courtship, and at your age, Mummery. <laughs> well, you'll see why when you meet her. Besides, it doesn't matter in the least. After all, I was a bachelor up until a few weeks ago and rather used to taking care of myself, you know. Oh, my dear man, you're not telling me that you manage the household. Oh, hardly. No need for that. We've engaged a housekeeper who's a gem, really. Capable, motherly soul named Sutton. Ethel's delighted with her, and so am I. Well, Exceptional cook and all that. Well, that's excellent. We can all do that sort of thing, you know. I say you better take it easy and keep off your feet today. A man's health comes first, you know. Thanks, thanks. I'll be all right. I took one of my tablets on the train. Well, well if you need anything, you let me know, huh? Yes. Oh, oh by the way, Mummery, I uh, suppose your wife doesn't know another of those cooking gems, does she? Well, I don't know. They aren't so easy to find nowadays. <laughs> don't tell me your cook is leaving you. Oh, good Lord, Lord. No, no, no. Perish the thought. It's 
It's for the Philipsons. Their girl is getting married. Yeah, well, all we said, marriage is the graveyard of good cooks. Uh, <laughs> positively, positively. You know, I, I think it should be a criminal offense for cooks to feel the mating urge. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Leaves a family high and dry. Yeah. You know, I said to Philipson, you mind what you're doing, I said. You get somebody you know something about, or you may find yourself landed with this poisoning woman. <laughs> What's her name? Mrs. Andrews? Carolyn Andrews? I don't want to be sending wreaths to your funeral yet a while, I said. <laughs> now, wasn't that a dreadful thing, though, that Andrews case? Ethel read some of it to me out of the newspapers. My, my, gave me the cold horrors. Oh, it's a disgrace, I call it. Three people dead of poisoning, falling ill one by one, gradually getting worse and worse, and suddenly dying off like flies after a month or so of her cooking. My. And all the police say is they think she's hanging around the neighborhood and may seek employment as a cook. As a cook. Now, I ask you. Puts us all in the shadow of the grave, doesn't it? Well, rather. Well, it's only to be hoped that they'll catch this charming Mrs. Andrews before she tries her arsenic seasoning on somebody else. And that's why I told Philipson to be careful about hiring a strange woman. Well, quite right, too. One well, can't be too careful about a thing like that. I'll ask Sutton if she knows of another cook as good as she is. You won't need worry about anyone she recommends. Oh, excellent. I, I, I suppose she's worked for the right sort of people, Mama, eh? Of, of, of right sort? Well, I imagine so. I I don't know. Well, didn't she bring references? Why, yes, yes, she did. A great pile of them. Glowing ones, too. But I don't know. Ethel and I were so glad to get someone that we haven't bothered to look them up, really. Well, well it's 10.30. I must get back to work. Um, would you mind dictating a few letters, Mummery? Mm. Some dunners? Uh, I do it, but I've some bills to get out in the next room. All right, I'm glad to. Well, I'll have Penny take them down. Huh? Uh, Miss Penny, will you step in here a moment, please? Coming, Miss Oh. Now, don't exert yourself, old man. Because, oh, Penny, Mr. Mummery will give you some letters for our forgetful customer. Yes, sir. And I'll be in the next office if I'm needed, Mummery. And uh, and do ask that sterling cook of yours to find someone for poor Philipson, eh? Mm -hmm. I'll speak to Sutton as soon as I get home. Good man. Yes. You're looking a bit pale this morning, Mr. Mummery. Uh, uh, yes, yes, I know. I, uh, let's get down to the letters, Penny, shall we? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, dear sirs... Unless payment on your account is immediately forthcoming, we must institute proceedings which... 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 Yes, sir. Which, uh, sir? Uh, 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 oh, I was thinking. Wonderfully clever how that Mrs. Andrews manages to get positions with respectable families. Wasn't nothing so clever about the last one, sir. No? No. She brought plenty of references. Glowing ones, too, the paper said. Where in the world would such a woman come by honest references? Oh, there wasn't no question of their honesty, Mr. Mummery. What do you mean by that? Oh, the poor deceased family were so glad to get someone that they never even bothered to look them up. Oh. Why, whatever is the matter, sir? Uh, Have I said something that I should... No, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to go home, Miss Penny. I, I don't feel well. Not at all well. On the homeward bound train, Mr. Mummery's mind kept up a continual flow of discomforting thoughts. Those references of Sutton's. How did he know, after all? Yes, Brooks was quite right. One can't be too careful. Be sure you get someone you know something about, or you may find yourself landed with this poisoning woman, this Mrs. Andrew. <laughs> The pain in Mr. Mummery's stomach gave a sudden twinge. He gripped the edge of his seat. He had eaten too quickly. His breakfast had been too heavy. He must speak to Ethel about Sutton. Sutton! As he walked up the quiet street of the remote little country town, the well-known familiar landmarks looked somehow strange and menacing. He reached the house, walked up the path, and then something drew him round toward the back. Somehow, despite himself, he found himself opening the screen door of Sutton's kitchen. Miss Sutton! Oh, oh Lord! Lord, sir! You did give me a turn, Mr. Mumry. I... Well, I, I was so tight enough waiting for the potatoes to boil that I... I didn't hear the front door go at all, sir. Well, I used my key, Sutton. Where is Mrs. Mummery? Oh, the poor dear was feeling a bit sickish after breakfast this morning, mm. and I, I might have lied down for a bit. She was looking so poorly. Ethel's sick. Ethel's never sick. I don't understand. Oh, it was uh, working about too much that done it, if you ask me. I, 
I told her to go light with it, but she's that restless she can't abide to be doing nothing. Where is she now? Well, that young Mr. Welbeck called by to get some flowers she promised his mother, and he cheered her up a bit. She needed cheering, too, by the look of her poor lamb. Where are they, Sutton? Well, they're having their tea in the garden. She's a deal better than she was, sir. A deal better. Well, I'm glad of that. I'll step out and have a word with her. Oh, uh, Mr. Mamre. Uh, yes? Uh, before you go, I'd like to show you what I got for your dinner. Uh, but I... I... Uh, just a moment, Mr. Mamre, sir. There. Have a look at that uh, now. Well, that, uh, that steak and kidney pie, isn't it? You'll find it beautiful and light, sir. It's made with butter, it is. So you'll have no trouble at all digesting it. No, well, very good. And it's seasoned something wonderful. Uh, uh, yes, I'm sure it's excellent. Well, I'll uh, I'll wander out and see Mrs. Mummery now, if you don't mind. Oh, by all means, sir. And uh, try to get up a good appetite for your dinner, won't you, Mr. Mummery? Yeah, I'll do my best. If, uh, thank you, Sutton. Ethel. Oh, Ethel. Who's that? It's I, Tiddlywinks. Hubert. <laughs> oh, I wasn't expecting you so early. Oh, well, I quit before time. I didn't startle you, did I, Pat? Yes, you did. I'm sorry, I... I thought something was wrong. I, I don't like to be startled. Hello, Mummery. Well, hello, Wellbeck. I didn't see you. How are you? Oh, I'm all right, thanks. But I'm afraid I found Ethel feeling rather badly. Yes, Sutton told me. Are you better now, dearest? I'm feeling dreadfully upset. I'm steady. I, I suppose I'll be all right by morning. Do sit down and have your tea, too. Well, thank you. I need it. Biscuits? Are they good? Melt in your mouth. I'd devour the lot if I didn't have to be getting home to dinner. Oh, you're leaving? I must. Mother's waiting. I'll have the gardener wrap her flowers. Give them to me. Oh, no, no, don't bother. Oh, no bother at all. Heaven knows he's paid enough for puttering about. Thomas! Uh, Thomas! Uh, uh, come in, ma'am. Is the tea still warm, dear? Uh, just right, thanks. Uh, you was calling me, Mrs. Mummery? Oh, Thomas, will you please wrap these flowers for me and bring them into the house? Uh, right old ma'am. I'll take Mr. Welbeck to the door. Oh, no, don't bother to get out, dear. Just tell Mr. Welbeck goodbye and finish your tea like a good boy. Oh, yes, indeed. Keep your seat. Well, uh, do come and see us soon again, won't you, Welbeck? Love to. But I can't leave Mother alone very often. She's extremely nervous lately. Terribly so. Oh, that's too bad. She's not really been herself since... Well, since that Andrews poisoning business started in the newspapers. Alarmed her more than you believe. Yes, well, it's rather unnerved everyone, if you ask me. I... I do hope they catch her soon. They may. What do you mean? There were a couple of blokes from Scotland Yard in the village this morning. Rumor is they've got a new line on Mrs. Andrews. <laughs> it's time they had. Think of it. That fiend has been on the loose for... Well, let's see now. Exactly one, two, three, four... Yes, almost four weeks to the day. I'd rather not think about it if no one minds. You're quite right, my dear. Let's not. Let's not. I have too many other things on my mind. Oh, by the way, Hubert, mm -hmm. I forgot to tell you to bring some cash home from the city with you today. I know you did, Diddly Wings, but I remembered it all by myself. Oh, a good thing, too. The greengrocer had a rather glum look on his face this morning. Well, we'll be able to stare him in the eye tomorrow. And then there's Sutton's salary. Mm hmm? Well, I'm not sure I brought enough for that. I... Oh, that's too bad. I do so want to be prompt with her. Prompt? Yes, dear. Sutton's been with us exactly one month tonight. <laughs> I, uh, must drop along now. See you soon again, Mummery. I, I say thanks for the tea. <clears throat> Hubert, what's the matter? Mr. Welbeck said thanks for the tea. Didn't you hear? Huh? Uh, uh, oh, oh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. You seem so far away, dear. No, not at all, not at all. I was a bit tired, I suppose. <laughs> Let the old gent rest his weary bones. He's worked much too hard lately. Come along, Mr. Welbeck. I'll do the honors for the family. Coming. Four weeks. Exactly one month. Oh, sir, the, the Mrs. Wayne from Zenius for the bouquet, and I just found a little patch in the back bed. I thought they... Uh, could... uh, Thomas. Thomas, do we have any old newspapers about? Old newspapers? Mm. Why, yes, sir. There's a stack of them in the greenhouse. I was just going down to get some to wrap up this bouquet. Uh, what would you be needing them for, sir? I want to look up some photographs, Thomas. Photographs? Of who, sir? Of Mrs. Andrews. <laughs> Here they be, sir. 
They go back about 20 days, these do. I always take them out of the kitchen when the cook is finished with them. I see. Now, let's have them, Thomas. Mm. Now then, June 15th, June 5th. Yes, that was just about the time. Should be an article about Mrs. Carolyn Andrews in this one. Of course, she'll have managed to change her appearance, but there should be a resemblance. Now, let's see. Ought to be about on... Thomas. Yes, sir? Where did you say you got these papers? Out of the kitchen, sir. Why, uh, what is it, Mr. Mummery? Somebody's been through them with the scissors, Thomas. Every line about the Andrews case has been clipped out. Every line. Mr. Mummery, sir. Oh, now look for yourself. There, 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 there. Uh, but, but, but I don't understand it, do you, sir? I'm afraid to try, Thomas. Are there any more papers about? Uh, there's a few more under this shelf where I keep... Oh, botheration. Look at that. Meddlers, that's what they are. Meddling with my things. Don't waste time with that now, Thomas. But look at it, sir. All spilled and wasted. It costs good money, too. Well, all right. We'll buy more of whatever it is. Only a bit left. And it ain't so easy to get, I'll tell you. It's just about the best weed killer there is. Them weeds just fold up and die the minute it touches them. If somebody hadn't tampered with the stopper, there wouldn't have been a drop lost. Thomas. Yes, sir? Let me see that can. Yes, sir. Arsenical weed killer. Contains arsenic. Deadly poison. <laughs> Stopper was loose, sir. Somebody had it out. I never leaves like that. Nothing like uh, that. Thomas. Thomas. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, uh, good Lord, Mr. Mummery, what is it, sir? I... I don't think I should have had that tea, Thomas. Oh, oh, I'll call the missus. No, 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 no. You mustn't alarm her. Whatever you do, don't alarm her. She's not to be excited. But get to the phone and call Dr. Maysby. I... I'm ill, Thomas. Tell him I'm terribly ill. <laughs> Is he, Dr. Mainsby? How is he? Uh, now, now, then, Mrs. Mummery, he's not so bad as all that. He's really far better than he was last night, decidedly. Yes, the patient is somewhat improved, aren't you, Mummery? Well, I'm feeling quite all right, Ethel. I shouldn't be surprised if I lived after all. <laughs> My poor darling, you gave me such a fright. Did I? Little wonder. Symptoms were rather alarming. Whatever on earth could it have been, Dr. Mainsby? He was suffering so dreadfully last night. Of course, those powders you gave him quieted him a bit, but... He did seem to be in such agony. Well, I really can't say precisely what it was. I could pretend to know, but frankly, I don't, Mrs. Mummery. I haven't the proper equipment here for a real diagnosis, but I'd venture an old-fashioned, non-scientific guess that it was a touch of common garden domain. Yes, yes, that's what it was, Ethel. I'm sure of it. Tomorrow or next day, when he's quite well, mind you, I'd like to have you have him come down to the office in Berridge for a thorough examination. Do you hear that, dear? You must make him promise to come, Doctor. He's so very careless about himself. He'll come. This episode gave him a bit of a start, I think. Nothing like a touch of tomain to make a man health conscious, eh, Mummery? Well, you're right, Doctor. You'll see me very soon, I promise. Excellent, excellent. And uh, until then, you just continue the powders I gave you. One every hour. Yes, Doctor. And no solid foods. Have that cook of yours make you a nice strong broth of some kind. Uh huh. What? And above all, stay in bed for the next 24 hours. I'll see to that, Dr. Lane. I'm depending on you, Mrs. Mummery. And uh, now, if you'll tell me where you put my hat... Well, I'll uh, get it for you. Oh, you needn't trouble. If you'll just tell oh, me no where... Oh, no trouble at all. It's out on the sand porch. So, Mummery, do try to take better care of yourself from now on, huh? No need to make Ethel a widow before her time. Well, I'll do my best not to. <laughs> um, Dr. Maysby... Uh, what's that, Mummery? Listen to me. I haven't time to explain now. What are you talking about? Keep your voice down, man. I don't want to frighten Ethel, but there's something very strange going on in this house. You are delirious. I may you? need your help soon. I'll phone you sometime today as soon as I can do it without alarming Ethel. Oh, she wouldn't be able to sleep for weeks if she had any inkling of what's going on. You aren't imagining things, are you? No, no, listen, Maysby. Last night before I took sick, I found... Oh, uh, I think. Well, well, Sutton? <clears throat> yes, Sutton, what is it? Uh, Mrs. Mummer has sent me to tell you that your chauffeur has brought the car around, sir. Oh, yes, yes, uh, good. I'll, I'll be getting along now, I think. Oh, sir, if I'm not being too inquisitive, sir, how is the patient this morning? Why, uh, he's much better, Sutton, but he had a rather grim session of it, just the same. Oh, that's dreadful, ain't it, sir? We'll have to take better care of him, won't we, sir? Much better care. Come tampering a 
around my green ass, will they now? Upset in my things. Oh, will they now? Not much they won't. I'll put a lock on this door that... Thomas, a... Thomas. Who's that? Why, Mr. Mummish, you ain't supposed to be up and about, are you? You're supposed to be in your bed, ain't you, sir? I want to get those papers we were looking at yesterday, Thomas. Does the missus know you're walking around out here? Sir, I'll be bound the missus We'll don't... keep this a secret from the missus, Thomas. You'll get your death, Mr. Mummery. If I lie upstairs in bed all day, the whole Mummery family will get its death. Now, where are those papers? Well, they're just inside the door there where you left them, sir. Just inside the door. Ah. Now, let's see. Now, where was it? Uh, right about there, sir. No, it wasn't. Uh, in a little further. Now, do you left. Ah. All right. Uh, there they are, sir. They're... Well, if they are, I've been struck blind. There's nothing here but the stone floor and a box of tulip bulbs. You must be wrong, sir. All right. Well, come and look and see here. Yes, sir. It's the memory. Well, they're gone. What do you know? I'm not at all sure what I know, but I'm going to find out. You come with me, Thomas. You ought to be in your bed, sir. All right, I ought to be in my bed, sir. Come along, will you? Yes, sir. Where is Sutton? I don't know, sir. Oh, yes, on second thought, I do know. I saw her going down to the greengrocer's to pay the bill. When she passed me, I heard her muttering something about not wanting anybody to come prying about her kitchen. The missus is particular. Yeah, doesn't want us in the kitchen, huh? <laughs> no, I guess not. Well, that's where we're going right now. I don't think she'd like it, No, sir. I'm sure she wouldn't, Thomas. Come along in. All right, sir, if you say to, sir. Now, now let's see, where could they be? You ain't expecting to find them papers in here, are you, sir? I was, Thomas. Is it possible that I'm mistaken? No, I'm not. Now, where could... The stove. That's where they'd be. That's just where the... Uh-huh, just as I thought. Have a look inside, Thomas. There they are, or what's left of them. Somebody kindled quite a little blaze with your old newspapers, wouldn't you say? No, sir. You should have been a detective. Yes, I always rather thought so myself. Well, the papers are done for. By Jove, she's a clever one, all right. Doesn't miss a trick. We're dealing with a very cautious, very thorough woman, Thomas. And I shouldn't be a bit surprised if... Well, are you listening to me? Thomas, what are you staring at? Mr. Mummery, what's that on the windowsill? On the wind... The weed killer... The arsenical weed killer. It's found its way into the kitchen. The stopper's off again, ain't it, sir? Right, the stopper's off and it's nearly empty. Thomas, what's in that pot on the stove? I don't know, sir. Well, look and see. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's chicken broth, sir. Real strong chicken broth. Good, here, here, here. Now take this empty medicine bottle and get as much broth into it as it'll hold. What for, sir? Just do it, Thomas, please. Uh, yes, sir. That's fine. Now then, get the car out of the garage. Where are we going, sir? We're going to Berich. But, Mr. Mummery, the doctor... We're going to see the doctor, Thomas, before we're all beyond his help. Uh, sorry to kept you waiting so long, Mummery, but it's quite a lengthy oh, process. Oh, I don't mind the waiting, Doctor. It isn't that, but... Ethel's there alone in the house with her, and I want to know. I can tell you now. You finished? I've analyzed every drop of the contents. Used Marsh's test for arsenic. I'm able to tell you a very definite answer, my boy. Uh, what, what is it, Maysby? Yes. You mean there is arsenic in that broth? And suddenly... I mean that broth is chock full of arsenic. Mrs. Andrews is taking no chances this time. There's enough poison there to kill your entire household. <laughs> Mr. Mummery, look, you're hitting 70, you are. It ain't safe at all, sir. I've got to get home. I've got to get home. Lord knows what's happening there. Oh, Mr. Mummery. Shut up. Ethel is poisoned, dying dead. Ethel is poisoned, dying dead. I patched the front right arm myself, sir, and it's fearful weak it is. Sutton, Mrs. Andrews, Sutton, Mrs. Andrews, Sutton, Mrs. Andrews, Sutton, Mrs. Andrews. Oh, thank the Lord, there's the house. What's that car doing in front of it? Uh, what's it doing there? I don't know, sir. It's happened already. The doctor's there. It's happened already. The doctor's there. It's happened already. It, There's the two doctor's there. standing out under the house, Mr. Manley. Oh. Oh, it's my fault. I did it. It's my fault. I left her here. I did it. I killed her. Oh, Mr. Mamory, sir. Oh. Ethel. 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 Ethel, where is she? 
Well, Beck, what are you doing here? I'm Scotland Yard, Mummery. Easy now, take it easy. Well, where is she? Tell me, I have a right to know. Who is the inspector? I'm Hubert Mummery. Where's my wife? Now, try to be calm, Mummery, won't you? That's a good fellow. What do you mean? Why are you sitting down here? Is she... Is she beyond help? I'm afraid she is, sir. Oh, Lord. Oh. Can I see her? I'm afraid not, Mummery. It'd only be painful. Oh, Lord. But that Mrs. Andrews, though, you've got her. She didn't get away. No, we've got Mrs. Andrews right enough. Oh, Ethel. You see, officer, we've only been married ten weeks. Ten weeks yesterday, I... Sudden. Sudden. Yes, Mr. Mummery. I'm very sorry about things. Sorry for you, Mm -hmm. sir. Sorry for me. That's good. Well, it's too late now. Well, take her away. Take her away. Oh, Mr. Mummery, I'm sorry. So Take started. her away. You'd better go, Sutton. Go ahead. He's upset, of course. Wants to be alone. Oh, you see, Mrs. Mummery and I were in desperate need of a cook. But it's just as I said to Brooks. One can't be too careful about taking a strange person into the house. Why, well, I didn't even suspect her until yesterday. I had no idea there were... Go. Are you letting her go? Well, you can't let her go. That's Mrs. Andrews. Don't... Oh, please, This sir. broth, it's chock full of arsenic. I didn't have no end in that broth, sir. It was mine while I was at the green grocery. You can't let her go. Why, this... And I didn't make your tea yesterday, nor your breakfast yesterday morning. So help me, Mr. Mummery, sir. I didn't. I didn't. You... Ethel. Oh, Ethel, my darling. I thought you were... Oh, are you all right, Ethel? I... Ethel, dear. What is it? I overheard what you said you told Brooks about taking a strange person into your house. You were right, you know, Hubert. Well, I, 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 I don't understand. Ready? Quite. Come along, then. Ethel! Well, not Ethel, really, sir. Carolyn would be more like you. Yes. And by the way, you're forgetting a rather important little formality, aren't you? Eh? Oh, yes. Sorry, Mummery. Carolyn Andrews, I arrest you for murder in the name of the king. And so closes Suspicion, presented by Roma Wines and starring Charles Ruggles, tonight's tale of Suspense. In just a moment, we will hear again from Mr. Ruggles. First, a message from the sponsor of Suspense. Why is the making of good wine like a proverb? Because both are based on long experience. For you to enjoy the many different taste-delighting Roma California wines, first, there had to be long years of painstaking cultivation of some of the world's finest vineyards. Plus, year upon year of development of the art and skill that go into the making of these fine Roma wines. Your first sip of any of the good-tasting Roma wines will confirm the presence of these needed years of preparation, will tell you why Roma wines are America's largest selling wines. Your taste will thrill to the superb quality and the downright satisfaction when you try, say, the tangy, delicious Roma sherry or the rich, hearty Roma burgundy or the sweeter, heavier Roma port. You'll be thrilled, too, when you learn such great enjoyment costs so little, mere pennies a glass. You'll want to add your voice to the international praise of Roma wines now rising in many lands. In these words, Roma wines are truly magnificent. Let me repeat the name. R-O-M-A. Roma wines. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. And now here is Charles Ruggles. Thank you, thank you. Well, it was a great pleasure for me to appear on Suspense this evening. And I'll be listening next week, as I hope you will, when Faye Bainter and a distinguished Hollywood cast will be starred. And one more word. As the enemy's desperate resistance grows greater, make sure that our fighting men suffer no lack in their need for more of the weapons of war. Buy more war bonds. Suspense is produced and directed by William Spear. Don't forget then, next Thursday, same time, Faye Bainter and other stars in... Suspense. Presented by Roma Wine. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.